one recent development that is of top interest is Qualcomm sharing its views on how the future of AI is hybrid. And put simply, uh, as we know, AI computation is split where and when appropriate to improve experiences as well as boosting efficiency and just basically you know, optimizing resources. Fundamentally, as a result, wireless and AI are dual technologies that we can anticipate will synergistically fuel ecosystem-wide innovation. They're basically joined at the hip. And as a result, I anticipate that AI's massive potential can be used to solve many of the intricate challenges that we're seeing in wireless system design. For instance, uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon modem RF platforms have consistently adopted AI technology to augment their modem RF design uh, for two generations now. And we can anticipate per four out of five generations, more generations of that consistency. And uh, as a result, uh, I think we're going to see uh, improvements in areas like system energy savings, network load balancing, and device mobility management. And uh, one key takeaway is that AI is primed to impact really every part of end-to-end -end wireless system design. And so, Clint, you know, from your view, uh, where do you see AI making uh, impacts, especially when it comes to advancing end-to-end -end wireless system designs? Well, I mean, Ron, you raised some great points already, um, just in terms of the potential impact and the and the outsized role that AI is going to play in the continuing development of these uh, of these systems and architectures. And you know, there's been a lot of talk in recent years about the vision of autonomous networks. Um, and I, I think in many ways, I mean, there's been some great progress in the market, but in many ways, that that vision remains uh, somewhat unrealized. Um, but I'm, I'm seeing AI playing a really integral role in some of the top priority areas like optimizing distributed clouds uh, by enabling more, more complete autonomous networks. Um, it includes making predictive and preventive uh, operational operations on a continuous basis and boosting the efficiency by reducing the network loading factor. Um, and so, in, you know, in addition to that, I, I'm also uh, seeing that AI can really optimize some of the more device-centric experiences with more efficient beam management and channel feedback computation, um, as well as some of the other enhanced capabilities it offers, like positioning and RF sensing. But you know, I think it's important to remember that AI is really transforming the design and the development of air interfaces and uh, areas like waveform and coding and bringing new capabilities like dynamic channel adaption uh, to adaptation to uh, 5G networks as well. Oh, I fully agree, Clint. And uh, I anticipate that AI will make an impact across all these areas. It's already basically uh, developing in that direction. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think one additional key area that AI is going to be very important is powering radio access network intelligent controllers, also mm -hmm. known as RICs. And what that means is that 5G networks can more efficiently manage interference, uh, schedule, transmission, and you know basically improve coordinate of multi-point operations. And we all understand that these are capabilities that the operators are going to require to basically you know, scale 5G, certainly when it comes to implement, implementing 5G standalone, as well as uh, 5G advanced uh, further down the road. Mm -hmm. And speaking of 5G advanced, uh, this is where AI can play an even more integral uh, role. Uh, quite simply, the 3GPP began a work in 5G advance uh, back in uh, the end of 2021. And this is uh, basically focused on developing a standardized wireless AI framework. Mm -hmm. And what this means is that applications such as multi-vendor channel state feedback uh, can become a reality. Uh, for instance, Qualcomm is prototyping the company's Cloud AI 100 platform, along with the Snapdragon uh, modem RF system across its 3.5 gigahertz MIMO testbed. And what this is highlighting is that the capacity gain in a multi-vendor system, that's the reality out there, can be enabled by sequential learning that prevents proprietary knowledge sharing. And we all know how sensitive that is. That is basically 
a fundamental when it comes to 5G security and being able to more effectively transition to 5G standalone and 5G advanced. Now, what I'm, I'm really keen on is the advanced millimeter wave beam management that Qualcomm is uh, de dedicating development resources toward. And what this is enabling is predictive beam management for both the base station and device in its 28 gigahertz millimeter wave test bed over in San Diego. And the implementation decreases the signaling overhead, resulting in increased usable capacity and extended battery life, uh, which is naturally a benefit for the entire ecosystem. I think we all fundamentally know that better battery life is something that is on everybody's wish list. And this is something that's going to play a key role in enabling uh, just that capability. Plus, Qualcomm is demonstrating centimeter, centimeter level accuracy in its indoor industrial IoT testbed. And what this is doing, it's overcoming the challenges of multi-path reflections. Now, downlink RF fingerprinting with AI can outperform other positioning techniques, certainly the ones that are out there today. And as a result, this can improve downlink time difference of arrival. And you take all these together, there's certainly uh, plenty to like. And this is, I think, uh, all pointing toward why we're going to see a lot more coming out of the 5G world, contrary to you know some of the skepticism that's out there because of the overhype, overhyping of 5G that we talked about on our, our last webcast. <laughs> <laughs>